like Nurking 101 here. I've had a few people ask me if I were going to be covering the dub of Evangelion on Netflix, and yes, I will be covering it, but I'm waiting a little bit until emotions calm down, and I've had time to gather all the information I need from the video, because the facts are a little messy right now. But I still wanted to do a video this week, and then I realized that Superman Year One came out last week, and unsurprisingly, it's pretty damn terrible. Superman Year One is, of course, written by Frank Miller, and takes place in his Millerverse. And while I'll say right off the bat, it's no all-star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, it is a really bad book. So why don't I start off with my first complaint that I've seen pretty consistently across the board for this book, which is the art. There are some shots, or I guess panels, of baby Kal-El, or baby Superman, baby Clark, whatever you want to call him, where his head is like ten times the size of his body. It looks really awkward, and it's honestly hard to take him seriously, and you just kind of start laughing because it's really dumb. Of course, it's no Dark Knight 2. It's no Dark Knight Strikes Again. It's not that bad, but the art is by no means good. At best, it's pretty standard, and at worst, it's hilariously incompetent in terms of the proportions of the characters. The narration is strange and incomprehensible, and it's really weird because at times it seems like it's a third party outside source narrating it, like the writer just telling you things. But then it seems like Clark is narrating it himself, because it will go back and forth between referring to Clark in the third person and the first person, so you're never really sure whether or not Clark is narrating it, or it's like a Harry Potter situation where it's like an outside source that's just telling you the story. And when Clark arrives on Earth, there's also this really odd, creepy, strange implication in the narration where it's basically like, let them think you're friendly. Let them protect you. Almost like he's manipulating the Kents. And it's honestly not clear if this is actually a baby Kal-El. When I first read it, I thought they were going on like a Dragon Ball Minus route, and they were aging him up and being like, well, a three-year-old Cal gets left on Earth, but the other context in the story makes it seem like he is a baby, but then he doesn't act like one, but then again, the narrator may not even be him. Because if the narrator is him, then he's way too smart for a baby, and it can't be a superpower, because he hasn't been exposed to yellow sun radiation. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal with the baby narration was, because there were a lot of times, especially with the parts of him as a baby, where I felt like Clark was narrating the book, and I'm like, like, in the moment, not like a journal, like, Batman Year One style, like, which in the moment narrating the story, and I'm like, that's impossible, he's a baby, he's not capable of thought on this level. Some of the dialogue in this book, must like the narration, is borderline incomprehensible. I'm not sure why this is, if it's because Frank and Miller hasn't interacted with a teenager since, like, the 80s, but, uh, the way the kids talk in this, is not how people anywhere in America talk. Not even in Kansas. I'm pretty sure uh, Lana Lang says golly in this book. Like she's like a girl from like the 60s. Lana Lang is probably the only saving grace of this book for about half of it, the fourth Frank Miller Doug, for Frank Miller Doug, which we will get to later. And I can't believe I'm saying this, because as we all know, Frank Miller had almost zero respect for women at all. But the Lana Lang and Kal-El Superman Clark Kent relationship is probably the only thing in this book I enjoyed at all. But even that has issues that make you question what the hell is going on in the book. Because, basically, when Lana Lang is introduced in this book, she's talking with some girls at school, they're like gossiping, and the girls talk about her as if she's dating Clark. Which is incredibly confusing, because the way the other girls are talking implies that there's like a missing chunk of story between Clark and Lana that we just don't know about. But there's no real indication that we had a time skip, that's a big problem with this book, is that it kind of just jumps around through different time periods in Clark's childhood, but the audience has never been given any clear indication of when the book is taking place and where we have time jumped 
too. So everything is really confusing when it's happening. Because you're like, are Clark and Lana like middle schooler? Because this is a pretty serious relationship for two middle schoolers. But then things also happen and imply they could be in high school, but they don't look like high schoolers on all the pages. The whole thing is really bizarre in the terms of trying to figure out and tell the reader when this story is taking place, when this piece of the story is taking place at least. And then there are things in this book that make me question why Frank Miller even needed to write it, really. Because then there are some really standard Superman origin things in here. Like, there are these bullies that they're dealing with at school, and there's a scene where one of them is, like, harassing Clark's buddy, Pete. So Clark, like, pushes him, and he ends up, like, breaking his arm, and Clark gets, like, ten days of detention. And the Kents are like, you shouldn't use your powers. But they also don't exert any parental authority over him for doing it. They're just like, not cool, man. And he just kind of gets away with it beyond the detention he got at school. And later on in the book, he'll like, join the football team. And he's like, just this once, I'm going to use my power. And I want to impress my girlfriend, Lana Lang. So he uses his power. And you can just see the Kents are like, super disappointed. And you can see they're mad at him. But there's never any follow-up. Like, being your immediate reaction is, oh, there's going to be, like, an argument between the kid and the parent. And it just doesn't happen. The parent kind of just let him cheat in a football game by using his godlike power, even though they clearly have issues with it. It's really bizarre. But most of it, very standard Superman origin. The bullies are assholes. Clark needs to realize just because somebody's a jerk, he can't punch them in the face when it's super god power. And the idea is that things are getting worse and the bullies are clearly heading into like criminal activity territory and nobody at the school cared really but Lana Lang reveals to Clark that she had pictures of them doing some bad stuff and they could get to the police but that she wants his help, she wants to get him involved and you know, she had like a good feeling about him so they agree to meet up at her house that night sneak out and go meet with the cops about her picture to take the bullies down because they're borderline doing criminal stuff at this point. And this is where we get to the point where you're like, oh yeah, shit, Frank Miller wrote this. Because basically, one of the bullies overhears their conversation and the bully get there before Clark and they're like, give us the camera. She said no because they're criminals and she's not going to give up her only evidence to put them down. So they proceed to try to rape her. And it's one of those moments where it's just so out there tonally. It's so different. The rest of the book have been very Frank Miller and the fact that a lot of the dialogue is weird. The narrations are insane. It's not very well written. The characters are strange. But there hasn't been any of Frank Miller's weird like what the hell are you doing Frank moment. And then he does this. It's almost like for the most of the book. Frank Miller was trying to contain himself, that urge to make him, to make Superman go, Who the hell do you think you are? Are you dead? Are you retarded? I'm the goddamn Superman! The urge to make Superman do that, yeah, that urge, it's almost like he was, like, trying to hold it back. But at the very end, near the end, you're like, the middle, to near end of the book, he's like, I've got to do a thing with the bully trying to rape Lana Lang. i got to do it because I'm Frank Miller and I'm a nut job. And the thing is, it's not even like they're threatening to rape her. Like, it's like a, or we're gonna do something horrible, and they, like, grab her arm, and then Superman shows up. There's, like, two pages with multiple panels dedicated to them getting ready, sexually assaulting her, and getting ready to rape her before Cal shows up. Obviously, eventually, Superman shows up and beats the shit out of them, but you're like, what the hell is this, Frank Miller? It's just so bizarre, it's out of place, and it has no place in this book, which is, in my opinion, what makes this so offensive, because it was so totally unnecessary. The fact that it was rape is what bothered me. It didn't need to be rape. It could have just been, they're trying to stab her or beat her up. That's fine. I have no problem with the bullies who are borderline criminals attacking Lana Lang. I have a problem with them trying to rape her and then dedicating multiple pages to it before Superman shows up. It's really, really bizarre, out of place, and it's completely unnecessary. And it's only there to once again remind the reader that Frank Miller had absolutely no respect for the female characters in his book.
<laughs> now, luckily, Lana Lang it doesn't look like she's going to become a prostitute like most of the book characters in Frank Miller's books. But the problem is still there, and this rape scene is completely unnecessary, and led credence to the belief that I and many people have that Frank Miller had no respect for women. I'd like to remind the people that are watching this that he is the one that retconned Catwoman's origin into making her a hooker in Batman Year One, knowing Batman Year One would be the canon origin, and he decided it was a good idea to make Catwoman a hooker. And that was the moment where I kind of went, oh, okay, yeah, Frank Miller Superman. Just kind of what I expected, and let's be honest, personally, I kind of liked Frank Miller more when he didn't like Superman. Now we get to the ending of the book, because the rest of the book is basically just this whole bully plot and the romance with Lana, which, despite the rape scene, is still pretty cool. There's a scene at the end of the book when Clark is leaving Smallville, and she, like, writes on a piece of paper, because she discovers he's Superman eventually. Then she writes on a piece of paper, I love you, and she hangs it, and she sits on her roof, and she hangs the paper. And then he can see it with his asteroid vision. Which I'm like, that is totally something a teenage girl would do if they were dating Clark Kent. And they knew he was doing that. That is a cool little moment where I almost went, did Frank even write that? Because that is so good. That one moment, I was like, that's cool. I like that. I almost did it. I almost, I almost don't know if Frank wrote that. Which is why it's so surprising to me. But the thing I think at the end of the book that bothered me the most was that Superman decided he is going to join the Navy, to which I immediately said, that is absolutely terrible, please don't, and then I realized this is going to probably be my least favorite Superman origin. The only good thing about it, in my opinion, is I guess you could say it explains why he became a lapdog for Ronald Reagan in Dark Knight Returns, but I'm just like, who cares? I don't want to read a book about a god in the military. Because, like, it worked with Captain America. I mean, well, he is awesome and has really powerful superpowers. At the end of the day, Captain America is a dude. And you can put a bullet through his head. Superman is a god. And you're having to join the Navy. And it's just, like, that's so counterintuitive and goes against what the character of Superman is about. Which is obviously about inspiring hope doing the right thing, and firing people, protecting people. I've enjoyed the army who go around killing people. It's just ridiculous. Plus, once again, he's a god. Why does he need to be in the army? If he wants to help his country, why doesn't he just go end all war? By, be by being Superman, he's a god. Like, it, 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 logically, it's like, why would you join the army? What are you going to do? Like, are you going to pretend to not be a god? Which you may say he does in main continuity, which I agree with, yeah, he does. He does it while acting like a reporter at the Daily Planet, not a soldier in the army. What's he gonna do? Run around and just hold back all the time during all the trading? It, just, it, just, it brings up so many questions, I'm like, I don't know, I'm almost borderline curious to how the hell you can write a Superman in the Navy. But I'm also just like, it's dumb, I don't like the idea. When I read it, I was like, I'm gonna hate this book, but I'm gonna keep reading it, because you know what? Frank Miller! I mean, I'm actually legitimately interested to see how bad this can get. Because this was bad, this was a bad issue, but I'm also like, meh, like it's not the worst thing Frank Miller's ever written. Like, it's no all-star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, but it's still pretty bad. I've ranted and gone on about why this book is bad for the last 14 minutes, so I'm gonna end this video now. I don't know what I'm gonna rate this issue. I'm actually just not going to, because I feel like it will be easier to rate the story when it's done. I don't think it's fair to rate it yet. And for anybody who is interested in the Evangelion Netflix video, that should be out next week on Monday, like always. Just been a little crazy trying to get all the information together. I want to wait until emotions have calmed down, until I have all the information available. There's a couple things I gotta do first before I can get that video out there. But guys, look forward to that. Hope you enjoyed. Tell me what you thought of issue one of Superman Year One, or to my Frank Miller in the comment section down below. Above all else, guys, have a great day.